Okay, excellent. Welcome to the stream. We're picking up from last week where we did a lot of data modeling around the flowchart DSL and mermaid diagram, like um, how do we model a, the mermaid diagram library in unison. And because Alvaro is a genius, he can't make it here uh, with us, but he's here in spirit. Um, he actually went ahead and modeled the uh, mermaid diagram DSL for flowcharts in his mermaid library. So we've got like all of the components we need, I think, to start looping it into the local remote interpreter um, and just see if we can draw some boxes on the screen. If we get boxes on the screen today, that's a victory in my book. So that's that's the goal. Um, yeah, uh, so I have done a little bit of um, simplification around the remote pure run interpreter. Um, because it's got a lot of extra stuff. It like handles channels in there and then the overall run handles like atomic and ref and all sorts of other things that we're not going to care about. So I, I, I have set us up for that. Um, I'm running into a round trip error, which I think is interesting and might be a bug on our end um, because this is just edited from the saved version of remote. Um, and it's telling me to use an uh, as pattern to, to try and like break, break this task data type apart. And I, from my understanding, we don't need to do that. So I don't know, Stu, have you run into this? Sorry, show me the, where's the line and okay. Yeah, it's line 158. So it's in a, um, it's in the uh, handler and it's trying to take apart the task data type. Uh, I think I would guess that it's it's having trouble disambiguating task. Uh, I would put some more qualification on the task constructor. Got it. That... It's, probably, it's a bad error message, I think. Um, okay. So what I would do is like, do a view task and then see where it lives. Okay. Uh, Find task. Uh, uh, yeah, I would do a view task. But... Uh... You do, if you put like, um, yeah, if you just put distributed dot task in, in front. I'm gonna do a use because this is. Oh no, it says use task oh, task. Oh, put distributed right. Yeah, just put distributed. Put distributed in front <laughs> of it because I think you have more than one. You're you're matching up with maybe. Distributed dot task. Let's see. Oh no no no! Put it before. Sorry, put it on the on your on your use. Uh, just change one forty to put. Yeah, yeah yeah. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's so weird. No. Uh, oh, it's because I was fussing around with this to see if I could just. Okay, that was what it was. Thank you, Stu. I was like, this this doesn't make any sense. I had just edited this into the file, so it should be correct. Um, okay, cool. So we've got this uh, admittedly a little bit thorny code um, for the remote pure run uh, local interpreter. I think what it's doing is it's creating a, a, a queue, like a local kind of heap and when you like sleep a remote task, it bops it down to the bottom of the heap uh, and it pulls from the top of the heap to like mimic running a task. As far as I can tell, that's what it's doing. Paul is the person to, to really dig into if, if folks have questions about that. Um, but my hope is that we don't necessarily have to have the most granular view of what like the task model is because I think we can just emit events like we build up a transaction log of uh, nodes and interactions to draw this graph of of the the remote kind of forking um, ability. Does that make sense? Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, anyway, you don't really have to know much about tasks or anything. Any way you want to construct the final result yeah. will work in real. Okay. Okay. 
So first, first stage, um, I would love to just get, uh, when you run, when you run a remote computation, have it draw a box that says like, I'm drawing a graph. That would be awesome. Um, so, um, I mean, do you have a pure way of doing it? Do we have a pure way of making a graph? Yes. Yeah. Doing what you just said. Uh, Yes, uh, I was just going to go up here and uh, make like a fake node and just make sure we've got like the infrastructure to, to draw stuff. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I should, uh, I should drop a, a live share link for folks to follow along. And I'm gonna put it in the chat here. Okay. Very cool. So with that in mind, so I am going to run a pure computation. Okay, cool. And I think what this should do overall is return either a failure of A and a graph so that we can grab it. So let's change that. Okay, so. Okay, cool. Um, and then I'm gonna plunk the flowchart thing into a doc. Um, the local version of the UI can't render mermaid diagrams and documentation just yet. It should come out in the next, like the next version um, of the local UI. So we're working on it. Next build. <laughs> Fortunately, we, we build a lot more frequently. We, we're releasing more packages, so hopefully it won't be too long. <laughs> okay, cool. So I was gonna make this into a doc. Uh, flow chart to, I'm pretty sure it's called two text. So this gives us the body of the, the diagram. And then I believe we need to do open up a doc block and say, I think it's called code, mermaid, word, I'm making this up, doc.word. Okay, I think that's a valid doc. At least it compiles, so that's something. Um, I feel like there's an example in the mermaid namespace. So let's check that out. I'm going to readme and actually, Take a look. Uh, code block mermaid word that. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> so we're going to. do that later. 
Okay, that's all a bunch of cruft. Um, so I think here for when we want to actually be creating these flowchart elements, we could use the DSL. I'll show you Alvaro's mermaid implementation because I think that's probably useful syntax. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing that one. Change windows, share that one. Okay, so as this how this library works is we have a flowchart create function. We give the orientation of the diagram, so this is top down. Um, first, we have to draw our nodes, um, so we kind of predefine the nodes, and then we uh, specify if there's a sub subgraph with some you know the name of the subgraph and the links. Um, the links between the nodes are what actually put the um, nodes into a subgraph. So um, all these things, you don't have to be as sensitive to context um, as you might think. Like you don't have to put the node in the subgraph context in order to make it appear um, uh, in, in, in the box, from what I can tell. So, yeah. I think we'll do something actually a little bit simpler um, than even using this DSL. Um, so this DSL goes through an ability called like draw flowchart, which is really cool. Uh, but what draw flowchart does is it goes from the nice DSL into a flowchart data type, which looks like nodes with names and links between the nodes. Um, and so rather than going through the D DSL for drawing this flowchart, I think we can just emit nodes and links um, and, and build like a, a mapping that way. Um, and then at the last step, uh, kind of just plunk it into this flowchart data type. Um, so I have on good faith that from Alvaro that that's a valid strategy. Um, I talked to him about that uh, beforehand. So that's the kind of direction that I'm thinking we can go. Anyone have any questions about all that? I realize there's some potential like back context for folks. Good. So making sure that I understand like what the goal of this library is in general, just because I've been out of the loop for a little bit. Yeah. So this takes any computation ability and renders graph the task tree that's necessary to run that remote computation. I think I'm. I think my speaker kind of fuzzed out for a second. It takes what that? What's that? Sorry. So this takes any remote computation, uh, any computation A with the ability remote, and it render it both executes. That or it just gives you back a copy of that computation plus a mermaid diagram of the task tree that's necessary to run that computation. That's the goal. That That's the goal. And the reason why I think that's important is as we were writing the Spark data sets, you know, make your own baby Spark um, article, it's actually pretty finicky to think about like, okay, I'm moving the computation to the data, that this is where that is. Um, it, can, it, it becomes harder to track the, the less trivial your example is. Um, and even though this local remote interpreter is just one location, you know, the idea is if we instrument this in some way, potentially down the road when we do have a local interpreter that does model more mm -hmm. locations, um, we can do something a little bit more robust in showing like, okay, I've forked, you know, these tasks over here and then I've merged them later. Um, and that is quote unquote more performant uh, than like forking the tasks and awaiting them back in the root node, stuff like that. So Stu, did you have thoughts about that? Uh, <laughs> whether things are more performant right now is <laughs> up, for, up for debate, but. 
Uh, yeah, well, you know what? One day at a time, yeah. Welcome, Chris, it's good to see you. Hello. Hello. Um, okay, so that is the context. Oh, I should show, well, I think Alvaro included a couple of examples of that task tree um, in this reading. So let's just make sure we kind of talk about that. Right, okay. So if we are able to do this flowchart example one, where we've got the location and a root node, that would be a victory. Um, but the idea is this is your home task. This is like representing when you've got a pure computation and it's running on a, on a remote node. Um, but in a more complicated situation, you might want to represent something like this. So I'm here on my root node. I fork two local tasks and I await them. And then I've decided I'm going to fork another task, but to a different location. Those two things are going to fork their own tasks and, and merge them. And then I'm going to wait that overall task back. To, to the root, to the home location. Hey, Alvaro, glad you could make it. Hi. How's it going? Not too bad, but uh, I was able to find some time. <laughs> ah, awesome. <laughs> um, I dropped the live share link into the, the chat. Um, I don't actually know if it's visible to you. Let me make sure. Uh, oh, yeah, I see it. You see it? Okay, cool, cool. Okay, so we, I was just giving some context about um, kind of the strategy for actually using the Mermaid library. Um, and rather than going through the DSL, um, I was thinking of building the nodes and links kind of directly, which is, I, I think, in line with what you were talking about um, from our conversation. So that's the idea. Um, the thing that I have so far, um, I've simplified the remote pure run interpreter so it doesn't do all the channels stuff. Um, so what I think we should do is sort of annotate this either with uh, just, uh, just nodes and, and links. We can start with maybe nodes um, and kind of go from there and build a data type that we want to be emitting, um, like a log, an interaction log, um, as things are being called. So. And by the way, Rebecca, I don't think your VS Code is being shared. Oh, You're pointing it. I am not sharing it. Let's go back here. There we go. <laughs> okay. Very cool. Okay, so the flowchart um, data type is comprised of text and node. Find node. Let's take a look at what do we need to create a node. Uh, that's view three. All right, a node is either a subgraph with its own orientation and node refs or a leaf with text and node shape. Okay. Well, let's think about the diagram like in this DSL that we want. Um, for the simplest example, which is, I would like a box that says location one and the root task. That would be pure flow chart is equal to flow chart, top bottom, and that's gonna be a list of subgraph, 
some location one and a list of node ref, which is, let's take a look. What is a node ref? A node ref is just text. Okay. Okay. Oh, does this have to be node.subgraph in order to be valid? This needs to be okay. Uh, the second argument to flowchart has type node, and I expected Alvaro. Uh, are you live? I think my internet has cut out. Apparently, I am like a ghost. Let's see if we can restart the internet. Yeah, yeah, I am also getting the camera. Is... Wait, is everyone back? Hello? I'll hear you. Can you hear me? I feel like maybe we're back live. Do you hear us? I can't, yes, I think. Okay. We still don't see your screen. Okay, it's let still... me. That's because I, sh I had to like switch internet thingamabobbers. I love the internet, folks. This all is right. great. <laughs> it was very eerie because all of your audio came all at once. <laughs> this is great. Okay. The joys of live coding. Cool. All right. Where was I? I was trying to make this thing compile, um, and I think I don't know what these data types are. So... Does the other one see uh, Rebecca's screen? Yeah. yeah. I do. I can see. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Okay. Uh, so this thing needs to be a tuple of text and node. But what does the text do? Is the text just... I feel like this text duplicates this text for the subgraph. Um, so 
So the text is um, a unique identifier for the node. Mm. And the one that is optional is a label. Oh, OK. If we don't provide the optional one, does it default to the value given um, as the tuple? No, no it just won't yeah, it'll render be a title. Oh, OK. OK. Well. In the case of subgraph, um, and a node, I think, actually requires, like a regular node, requires a, a label. Uh. Okay. It requires both. Okay. Well, then so I... th that is one of the one of the things that DSL does. It, it generates the identifiers. Mm. But it, but if we're not using the DSL, we have to make our own unique identifiers. Got it. Okay. Okay. So I have a feeling when we build this programmatically, what this is going to do is it's going to take the location ID. Um, location node ID and, and and we'll probably like textify it in some way um, to represent a identified location um, but um, okay and the second part of the flowchart is just drawing links so Let's do a quick text. Let's go here. And I found it easier to print out the text in a main program. That way it doesn't um, encode the new lines. Ah, it actually prints them out. Right. Okay, so we're going to print line to text expected pure flowchart run temp main. Hey, that looks pretty good. Let's double check it in our handy dandy live editor. Okay, that looks right. Goal number one location one with a root task. Cool. So this is what we want to draw. Now we got to put it into this remote pure run simple. Um, so I think as soon as we form the location, sorry, real quick. Why are we re-implementing a, a remote interpreter? Uh, why are we re-implementing the remote interpreter? Yeah. Or what do we, sorry, I didn't, I, I think I, I lost the story about why we're making this function. Why we're making the remote pure run simple function. Yeah. Uh, because the other one has like a giant channels implementation in it. And so <laughs> I took okay. it and just copied it, got rid of the extra stuff. Okay. Uh, uh and then the idea is this one will emit i haven't decided if i'm going to use stream or if i'm just going to like create a list like a log data type okay. and, and have okay it, yeah one of the, one of the two okay. um okay. yeah so probably if ref stuff we can remove anything that has anything to do with scope i think but i don't think oh, we can oh oh no never mind never mind i forgot if we're ruining this we're doing this locally i see i see never mind never mind never mind yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I know too much about I about the other the I'm I'm thinking about the cloud remote, not the, the pure remote. Okay, yeah. sorry. Stu has the, you know, glorious job of having to deal with like huge complexity when you actually want to run <laughs> remote remote computations. This is just local. Um so yeah. Okay. Cool. If I use the stream ability, so one of the things I had thought about doing is every time we see like a task.fork, just emit an event. And I'm trying to remember if that's going to be a foot gun situation because 
forking a task is not effect polymorphic, right? So task.fork, if you look at it, or remote.fork. You want um, capital or remote? Right, okay, so this one here, remote.fork takes a location. The thing that you fork, the like the computation that you fork can be effect polymorphic, but what you were what your returned has to just be interpreted into remote. So I don't think I can actually put stream in here and have it work. No, but since we're all local, you could change the return type of this thing to actually include a stream. I could. So what you can say is that your right remote pure run simple is going to produce a stream by sticking stream on the last arrow along the scope. But then would with the existing fork, um, would I have to change fork as well? Like the actual ability uh, request constructor? No, you're just going to be able to, all it's going to mean is that anywhere inside this pure.run.simple function, you'll have access to emit stuff from inside this function. Mm, but if the goal... So then what you would do is when to the, then the users of, then whoever calls this function um, would have to handle the stream, which you could do, okay, we can do that in here. Um, let me get into the, give me one sec. Uh, so if we were like, for example, we could, okay, I, I guess what I'm saying is one way to do this is to do it here and we could have, if we could stream some text, I don't know, what do we want to stream out? Uh, if stream text is fine for now, but we'll probably do stream of like nodes or stream of links. Okay. Right now, we'll just say it's text. Um, so we can either do this, and then whoever calls remote up here that's simple has to be able to consume the stream. Yeah. So. Or we could do that internally in here and then produce just the. We can produce either the, we can produce the stream like like this which is kind of a gross time the type signature um we can also handle the stream internally in this function and then change this to be a list of whatever it is um by creating an internal stream that we can refer to in the rest of the body of this function i i think so hello? oh hello um, I, I like the, the first. I think that could work. The first where we just, just having just we're gonna yeah, admit admit a, yeah. Oops, I didn't need that. Uh, uh I mean, but it's just this complicates that you're putting a extra burden on the callers of this function, which may be what you want or not what you want. Uh, so like I we think... might want to make this a helper function that has some other ways in there i think that de delegating to the caller of this function because this is an impulse function anyways would be fine but i think that the problem is that we can't do this and have forked tasks themselves be able to fork tasks which is what you would be able to do in the remote ecosystem i because if I say I don't see why so this is a, um, so what does fork actually do is fork an ability function or no, does not, it delegate to a it's, it's, it's try fork at is the, is the handler function that we would have to handle right yeah okay but, but if we have if we're handling try fork here we could emit here, right? As opposed to trying to do it from fork itself. Mm. Okay. I... So the question is, do we need fork to be polymorphic? Because any call to fork will mean uh, a call 
to the handler mm. and the handler should have access to stream. Right. Uh, okay. Okay. It's not a problem because we have it on our last era already. So anywhere in here would call and do anything with stream or fine. Okay. I think, yeah. I think that's right. I'm just being paranoid. Yep. Let's do it. Type system will not will tell us, if, but I don't think yeah. I think we're fine. Yeah. We'll we'll. I'm gonna make this stream. We'll create a data type um, to do that in a little bit. We want to decide what it's gonna be, or is it gonna be text? It's not gonna be text. I think we need to create a data type that um, uh, is uh, either links or. Uh, nodes. I wouldn't mind still starting with text, sort of mm. just to see a textual yeah. log file. That's a good idea. I like text. <laughs> <laughs> stringly typed. We yes. Do. Yes. Love a good stringly typed system. Um, okay. So stream dot to list. You're gonna no. So here we have to handle the. We're gonna have to handle it, right? Yeah, I was gonna handle it up here in this remote pure run diagram. Um, okay. So after we uh, run remote, we're gonna have two abilities to handle: scope of s and stream of text. Um, I see. We run the. We handle the scope thing, and then we're gonna handle the stream thing. Okay, so I wonder if this needs to be delayed. So scope dot run. No, I think you need an exclamation point on the to list, maybe. I think you're right. Okay. But uh, oh me. Uh no, I think this needs to be delayed, yeah. and then this does need the exclamation point, and it's. I found a value of type blah, blah, blah. All right, that's fine. We're gonna do this comma flow chart instead of that other one. This looks like a function call, but with... No. Oh, you're right, because we added the exclamation point here. All right, and we're gonna say you are a list of text or oh, we need we need the result. And the and the text list, not this flowchart thing. So it's text list, comma. Well, wait. We already ran the result. Yeah. We so the... we need to list with result from streams. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. That's what it is. To list with results gives us the list of A's and then the result of R. Okay. Cool. So let's. Yeah. You Are you, tuple that, right? Yeah. You want to do it there? You got it. Okay. I'll do it. Actually, I think I think we just oh, right. get rid just of the, get rid of it right. and it will return it. That's the type we want, this tuple. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Compiles. It works. So let's start emitting stuff and just see if we can... Uh, that's good. Um, okay. Right now we only have one location. So as soon as we enter the remote pure one run function, we can emit the location. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then The pure function 
we can say when a function is pure. In this giant go thing, So this is uh, going to be the end of each. That's going to come out at the end of each task. This this emit pure thing is going to come out at the end of each task. When each task completes. Hmm. Okay. We hit that case every time a task completes. Every time our remote stack exits. So. Uh, okay. That's good to know. I think that's okay. I kind of just like to see this. Sure, we'll see it. Yep. Um, let's make it compile. Let's go here, and I think this needs to say stream text. Mm. Okay. So I wonder if there are some non-polymorphic functions in scope here. So. Um, what is it saying? Which one, which function? Okay. The expression in red. I think it's that is done is a delayed function of scope s boolean. Can we just, yeah, can we just say g? No, no, no. I think you just, I think you just want to add stream text there. Uh, we have to pin it down to the, to the stream in no, particular. No, that's fine. This is an internal thing. I think this is okay. Am I wrong? Mm. I don't know. Wait, the just... problem is NQ later. Oh, you're totally right. Okay, let's take a look at NQ later as a function. Huh. Okay. And but it is polymorphic. It is polymorphic, isn't it? I wonder if something is sleeping polymorphic. Sleeping is not. Is done. It's wait. It's is done. Is it is done? Is done. We just added the stream. Okay. Two, I think, because oh, unless it's is ref done. No. No, not not that one. On that, we're not using that there. It's. I think maybe we shouldn't have added. Maybe we shouldn't have. What the first thing is is done, which. Mm -hmm. Is done is the first argument to go. How do I stop following? Yeah, I just started following. I don't know. How do you change who you're following? I know. Everyone is fo following Alvaro, I think, <laughs> which is, you know, a, a good position. Oh, no, and no, I keep scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can just click on a participant, and that's who you're. How, okay, but how do I follow myself? Go to the timeshare tab on the left, click on participants, and unclick whoever you're following. Focus participants. Oh, uh, hang on, I'm gonna find your window now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so do you have yeah, you guys is, like what are your live, live share, share on the Yeah, your like live the, share. Third from the bottom. No, up a little bit. Oh the very right. bottom item in the left hand tab. Oh, go back there. No, no, no. You had it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh there you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So click out Alvaro's name like three lines down. There you go. Uh okay. Okay. All right. Now we have autonomy. Um, okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, we're trying to figure this out. Why is this NQ later thing? It, it's saying that it's go. I don't think it's complaining about NQ later yet. So, so the thing that drives me crazy, so we should have access to stream everywhere in the entire function body, right? Uh, well, I guess not inside functions where we say we don't. Yeah, 
So, it's one of those things we delete yeah, think... all of our internal functions type signatures. It'll start working. But or it will saying. fail for creative and weird reasons. Mm. Is it? Uh, it's not so tough. Uh, I don't know. This seems. Okay. Um, is there a way we can break any of this out? Maybe mm -hmm. when in doubt, add type I'm annotations? I'm, I'm moving it around. I'm managing to get it moved around. Where are we now? Complete. Yeah, where Let's are you out. doing that? I'm on line 175. I'm running stream text to all the inner functions that say they don't need it. <laughs> okay. So about needing it, and it's working. It's a good strategy. Love it. Just on the last arrow, everything that's complaining about it needs a... Ooh, okay. okay. So uh, now 145. Yeah, what is this one? This one is saying... This one already has stream in the last arrow, but... Uh, um, right, WS. WS comes from... Comes from lookup task. And lookup mm. task is... Lookup task needs generic G. It only permits ability scope. So, oh. Oh, I see. So lookup task needs stream on the last arrow. So, question. This is me and ability imprints scrambling my brain. Why, why can't we just say generic ability G? Why do we have to say stream of text here? Um... What's G? I, That's just saying you should have ability, uh, all abilities? Yeah. Or, well, we can't just give you all abilities. We'd have to handle them somewhere. This is saying that if it's already, it's got to be the same G that's already in that pure task status thing. Mm. That's the only other place where G is referred to in this signature. If we just added this, I don't think we should. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Okay. We're being particular about support. No, it's just we're not going to be able to say, except lookup task can't take, I don't think it can do. You couldn't know. like look up tasks. Is G here before? No, I added that because I just wanted to say if we decided to use store instead of stream, like could we do that? Okay, but we'd have to just change all those places that we are referring to stream text and make them and then parameterize on the very outer, say that the remote pure run simple is doing something else. Uh, okay. I, that has an init function, right? I, mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking. We need that one thing. I'm I'm thinking the same thing, Rebecca. Oh. I'm, I don't quite understand. Like I, I'm I'm I would my expectation was that adding just G to the functions that don't actually emit could work. That's what you were thinking. Oh, right? if they don't emit. Oh. Yeah, hmm. yeah. That's what I was kind of hoping. But is it just because G is already here, so it means some. Like it, no, G. I don't know that. Then we, yeah, we shouldn't use G. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. So like H here. How come H doesn't? Well, I'm not okay. Well, okay. Needs okay, I think we need to add it on the. Um, is this the second? Oh. Is it retained? No. For trial weight? Trial weight's already got it, but it's 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 one of the it's C B so, task ID C B Is C B short for callback? I don't know. What is it? It's not a net, but it's an either failure it's a function from yeah it's a callback so since try await is not itself emitting why do we need stream of text as opposed to just g 
Um, well, it's saying CB needs stream of text because uh, mm. oh, and so the question is why does this this this, this thing needs need stream and What's retain? Retain is the. Uh, what is what is WS? W. Oh, waiting. No. That's WS. Find. Uh, it's a mutable ref of. Either failure or A. See, I think we need. Uh... I also wonder if because we kind of went down partially one track, will we pinned everything to, to stream in some circumstances in this implementation? And now we're trying to do we something absolutely more general have here. To stream because we pinned this function has streaming on the last arrow and it's been it remove pierce run simple returns it uses streaming like yeah let's so we have to talk about streaming everywhere yeah. let's let's make everything like no generics make it do the stream okay so this... i'm not saying i don't know what you mean by no generics well because we had an h up well, here in the task well, the G's, okay. The G's, we, okay, I don't know. I mean, we, we keep the G's, but, but we, we don't try yeah. to rely on them for Yeah. the streaming. This needs to be a comma. I don't know why See the CB, it's, the CB thing is like, this is like one of those red herrings where it's something else higher up and we have a problem with our reporting, I feel like. Oh, also CB... Um, thank you, Copilot. I wonder if we need to help it by providing types. So the type of CB, if retained, then call back at me. Else, cancel the task. Let's make Unison tell us what C it thinks CB is. Yeah, that's right. All right. Can you can we explicitly put that structure in there? Yeah. 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 And what is that extra E? Um. That shouldn't be there. We don't need. She never need two polymorphic effects. No. Oh wait, G's referring to something specific. Never mind. No. Can, at all. that's uh, an H. Yeah. yeah. Um. Can we remove stream text from this one just to see why it needs stream text? It doesn't anymore. We just fixed that. Oh wait. Oh, I see. Never mind. We didn't fix it. No. 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 Remove. Sorry. Where are you proposing to remove it from? On line one forty just temporarily remove stream text from the list of abilities J just to see why it needs stream mm, text. Sure. Well, that's not helping anything. Mm. Is it? Oh, now, now it says uh, I, need I just want to identify. Text. Okay. So yeah, now no, that makes sense. He's the culprit. Right. Okay. Yeah. And CB so is just to identify the it. third argument. One, two, three. And it does have, and it's saying, yes, it does need stream text. Can we remove that? And now cancels the problem. Okay. Okay, I can hold on, hold on. We're gonna move it from cancel. I was, but I think eventually we get down to now. Complete needs it. So now we're gonna get back to some other problem. All right, I remove it from complete. Right, it's complaining about complete. 
Okay, I was sorry, I got it from complete underscore. Now it's going from complete, and now we're here. On uh, 96. Mm. That's because NQ later. Uh-huh. So I'll take out NQ later. And now we're back to where we were. <laughs> And, and go does need it because <laughs> we added it. Yeah, um, and go needs it, but that's fine. Go has it. Okay, so uh, we kind of have to add them all back. Now. No, 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 I don't know. I don't know that's the case. But why does why here? Don't we have have it because it's in the type signature for on 152. But but this is suspended though. On 9177, this is suspended. Oh. Mm. Because NQ later, right. That's why. Uh, okay. okay, so we do have to add stream of text to the long chain of helper functions. That... Um, because eventually they call go. Uh... Wait, go calls itself. Where do we get into go? Well, okay, go needs it. Go has it. And the problem is, okay, yeah, NQ later needs it because Go calls NQ later with it. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should I start adding it back? Yes. I, I think so. <laughs> yeah, because adding it to Go, since all these functions eventually call Go, mm -hmm. um, really... Well, it's not just passing, passing it through. Normal stuff. Okay, so cancel needs it. And so now what? Okay. And so try await needs it. A string text. Complete has it. But that Complete underscore. means that this needs it. Cancel. Yeah. Sucks. This is the one I don't understand. Why does this one? Uh, try await? Are you looking at try await? No, I'm in wall 146, yeah. Mm. Okay, retain is just a Boolean. Are we delayed in any way here? No. I think so. Uh, the argument to waiting so we... might be delayed. Uh, no, it's not. This would need, wait. Oh, is it so? Gee, the pure. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we needed to say that our pure task status needs a G, and anywhere we see pure task status, I think we need to add stream to it now. Yeah. So looking at the unique type for pure task status, does it does the type itself need to change? Because this no, I don't think so. Because it's already got the G in there. Mm. Okay. It's it is the G. That's what we need. Yeah, yeah. So pure test status SGA needs to become for us anywhere we have that we need it to include stream in the with the G, I think. Oh, into, into which is the okay. Type of the pure test status. Right. So wait, wait, okay. when... where does the type of waiting come from? Sorry, were you saying Alvaro? Um. Actually, I was worried about the error, but then it changed. So, yeah. never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Remains to be Wait. seen if the error changing is progress. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, what what I was gonna ask is on line one forty six, if maybe we can assign the last parameter to uh, you know bind it to something with a type before giving it to write. Yeah, we can do um, that. Add C B is equal to oops. I'm messing this up. That. Okay. And then let's say add C B. I'm gonna make Unison tell me what it is. Oh, 
It's failing for a different reason right now. Probably because it's being indented back. Ah, there. thank you. Thank you. Um, but I don't know what the, you know, before we were getting an error, um, but it went away. I don't know what we did to make it go away. Was it that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, okay. So the, the ability rec um, constraint is not coming from right. It is coming from either read or or the it's operator, coming from waiting, right? Coming from from what? Oh, isn't it coming from waiting? Uh, yeah. So oh, right. Which but, is why. But this is not complaining that it has this 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 is complaining that this lacks the right ability. But, but what is complaining? It's got to be one of these functions in line 147. I think. Oh, what's. Okay. I think what. Which uh, I'm guessing is inferred from either read or the column plus. I think it's inferred. It's saying that the two things you're adding don't have the same type. WS comes from waiting. Waiting is that pure and task you, status thing. Well, we did actually give it a, we did give it a type on 140. So we should, the type there shouldn't be in question. But, but real, real quick, can can you actually inline, not inline, but like uh, bind this yeah. to a value before? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, let's do that. So it does not indicate anything about stream of text. What if we stick it in there? Okay, let, and let's use the. And then it's going to complain about read. So what's the type of read? What is read? Where does that come from? I think read is just read from ref. Like it's from um, the ability for scope. So do we have to add that? Uh, okay. Um, so I think it's here in lookup task. Not not this task ID thing here, but in the actual pure task status generic ability type. If we say stream of That's text. That's right me, but I... I found Okay. Wait, did all the errors disappear? Yeah, did it did did someone just fix everything? Maybe. Huh? Okay, let's see. Oh, um, yes, it's because I have been annotating things as NAT everywhere in this project. My favorite. Whoops. Kill that line, I think. Just delete the type annotation? Yeah. Sure. Ah. Wait, right back where, where did... No, 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 I have a gnat somewhere. No, this is, oh. no, we moved it. Do we move it? No. This is no, new, this, isn't it? Oh, this is new. This is new. Wait, where were we before? Uh. Oh. Right. Well, before we... I had annotated things as that. Now we're back to go. We're just back to where we were before. <laughs> Let's see, line 181. Mm. 185? So, uh, Oh, try it. Try a wait. Wait. Is that the problem now? Um, let's take a look. Try wait as a helper function. Is it? 
it's no that trial is trial weight is a, is is actually a trial weight. Uh. Oh, right below it. No, I, I, this try this try weight has more oh, arguments right. than the oh, other try weights. You're right. You're right. Okay, I got you. So where is the try weight helper function in this? I got thing? it. It's on one twenty nine. I did it. Ah. Oh wait, yeah. I found an ability mismatch when checking the application. 206, insert. Task ID. I bet this is another leg. Oh. What, where's insert? Uh, is insert a helper function? It kind of looks like it is. We should really not name our helper yeah. functions things that are like things in the standard lib. I don't get it. Where are you? Can you just view it? See if it's a thing? Oh, it's going to be like, is it mapped out insert or some shit like that? Sorry, I shouldn't search that. Or where are, where is it? I mean, there's like a lot of insert. Oh, it, it is mapped on insert. It's mapped on insert? Yeah, line 161. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So the problem is the types of what was in the max. Okay, so we're trying to insert something that doesn't. It's the pure task status thing is not lining up. Uh, okay, and that is task zero has the wrong type inferred. Where did tasks zero come from? That right above. Task zero. Two oh five. Read tasks. So. Task zero. Let's add this type annotation very helpfully. Oh, that's a big one. That's a hefty type. Okay, <laughs> so it's a, it's a map of task ID two. So the thing to look for is in where you see the pure task status. Does it have stream text in Wait, there? Did the error disappear? I think it might have. I think I might have fixed it. Right. We are the ability coercing oh. geniuses. Okay. Great. Ability whispers. Yeah. <laughs> well, future of programming. <laughs> <laughs> Ship it. Okay. Um, okay. Cool. Well, I guess. Do, do, do. I mean, it, it even kind of did this run diagram. It added the, the pure thing so like this is good um so i have a quick question um did we do something to fix it or was was it just annotating that that fixed it i think it was just annotating it that fixed it was it. no it was that these places where we're creating these pure task status things needed to know about stream text because it was it was that with that so on um, 205 or, or, or where are we it's it was not 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 two oh well two oh five was the last place I fixed it, but um So if we remove two oh five, do we get the error again? Yeah, I that's what I was thinking. Now we don't. So No, because I fixed it. I think the real fix was um getting it up on line sixty five. Mm, okay. Line uh... five and sixty seven were the last fixes is to make okay. sure that we said that in that pure task status, that second type parameter need, needed to know the stream text. Mm. <coughs> okay. Okay. All cool. right. Ship it. Um, okay. Let's try and add a fork to, um, like, fork a task uh, to our actual test program up here. Um, let's do a test. 
before remote. And then we should just rerun it. Yeah. Does fork take a location? And fork at is what you're looking for. I think it does. That's, yeah, think. that's what I want. I want to say fork at here, and I just want to add two plus two. Um, you gotta suspend it, maybe. Oh, thank you. Let's make that delayed. Okay, and let's do. All right, so now line 19, we're gonna say run this diagram, make sure we can fork. Oh, and it needs to say which plus symbol. Okay. Oh, we should await it just to be, you know, proper. Save task one. Uh, oh. We'll have to add a unit at the end. And no. I think I need to say which. There's async await and then there's remote await. So sometimes you gotta say which one. I think you actually wanted the net. Mm -hmm. Forget here, do. I found a value of type nat where I expected to find unit. That's. You gotta ignore that result if you're just gonna throw it away. Okay. Okay. I'm fine returning the actual nat. That's fine. And now I get two pures because we have two tests as exiting. Huh. That's mm, that cool. makes sense, that, right? That, yeah, I, I think that makes sense because then it's like your root task, your your root task finishes after your fork task. Is that right? Well, it's just whenever you say fork at. Whenever that thing that forks finishes, that's when you're admitted the pure. You just that's because that's what you did for your default case, mm -hmm. which is got called at the end of the, the end of the task, right? Yeah. So, so, yeah, you're getting location one, and then the first pure comes for when your two uh, two two plus two finishes, and the second one comes when your task for remote task finishes. Got it. Okay. I'm gonna add an emit call when we run the when we do fork and await because I kind of yep. want to see them show up. So yep. I think try await is that go uh, uh, actually no. Do we want to do I think it has to be try await false task ID. This is the callback. Right. There's a function. There's a there's an inner function that does the actual try await. Right. You can you we could we could do this inside. We should do it inside the helper function. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and we only want to emit the try await when it's like when it has finished, when it's done. Oh. Right? When the await's done? When the yeah. Like Try await means like I'm fin I'm finishing the task, right? As opposed to I'm forking the task. Try await. It's just you want it like so when try await is called, we're gonna block until the until the thing is done. Do you want it to emit the result before when you start awaiting or you're done awaiting? And in this case I don't think it really matters in a pure interpreter. Well, I was gonna do it on both. <laughs> okay. When we fork uh, emit fork. I think try wait is more complicated because you can sleep oh, like a, a task that you're awaiting can still be in like a non ready state even yep. right here. So I think it's just right here. Stream emit. Oh, well, 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 hold on a second. Uh, I mean, wait, wait, wait. why, why, 
we have to do it in two places exactly, right? Right at the beginning of the function, right at the end of the function. We don't want to do it somewhere in the middle, do we? I think we want to... I mean, if you want to emit... I mean, I don't know. Uh, do we want to do something like this? Uh, oops. Um. Okay. Hmm. I. That's not the order I expected. Yeah, I, I expected to see at some point await this done case, but. Oh, uh, well, that. Huh. Like, doesn't that. I, no, I... because. Because we started awaiting it before it was done, so we are in the next next. We are on one one forty seven, I think. Mm, okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay. I I think I'm interpreting done in a different way than what it is meaning here. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I'm still surprised that the, that the away end comes before the pure, but I'm not sure why that is, but mm. So for the purposes of drawing the diagram, if I understand this right, we won't need the try away start or the waiting, right? We only will want the try yeah, away end. One. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, kind of... I, I, I was just. Yeah. Curious. Well, I don't know because wait, each one's good. Like the try wait start is maybe an arrow in, and the try wait end is an arrow out, and the waiting is maybe a I don't know, or I'm, I'm not sure. I think the current plan is to only flag the forks, yeah. and when the awaits return. Okay. Yeah. So we just need to find the cases where the the fork ID forked ID the task ID returned from fork matches the one that. Um, is returned from end. And that was what will draw our link. Oh, so we need to know who called us and who are... Yeah, but I think we have all the information we need to, to make that link because I think the data structure is just a map of task IDs that we're like marking as completed. So let's add a, let's add a stream emit for forks. Um, okay, I'm going to do a, is there a two text function on this task ID? There is. All right, task ID to text. You need to wrap everything after emit or put a let after the emit. Ah, uh, thank you. I will always forget that. Uh, it, you need text up plus plus. Okay, ugly but but working, and I kind of want to know when we hit try wait end, what the task ID is there, because hopefully it's symmetrical, and if it's not, then we should be worried. Okay, do we have the task ID in here? Yes. Text plus plus to text TID 
Ready. I'm sorry for interrupting. I have to leave, uh, but um, I enjoyed it very much. I hope that I can come again uh, next week. I uh, think you are doing this on a weekly basis every Wednesday. We try to. Yeah. I always announce in general ahead of time if, if we're you know on an off week. But thank you so much for joining. It was great seeing you. Yeah. I got some inspiration for my own code by just looking at a, a little bit bigger project. So uh, 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 thanks a bunch for that. And uh, uh, see you soon. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye. 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 Okay, we've got all these nice IDs. Okay. This is great. All task ID one. I wonder if the root tasks ID is zero. I bet it is. That seems right. That's a that's a pretty safe guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's just calling increment, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's add another fork. Let's make sure it like nests appropriately. Um, task two equals fork at here, do three plus three. Remote dot, wait, task two. Okay. Okay. So we for on, Oops. Okay. So we say the root task is forking one, the root task is forking three. Yes. Uh, we're waiting on one. Hey, Isa. This is, we have some success. <laughs> this is great. I, I love this. Okay, so task zero, so root task has forked one, root task has forked three. Odd that it skipped two, but I'm not going to overthink it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're off, off by one. Um, then it waits on task one. It ends task one. It calls start again. No waiting needed because there's no other tasks in the queue. Is that kind of what I'm, I think that's what that means. So this what we're looking at is a flattened textual representation of the execution time. Yeah, yeah, we're using stream emit. We had some fun times figuring out the ability inference in this thing because there's a lot of like, we thought we could do it generically and, and then we pinned everything to just stream of text. Um, but yeah, we can kind of see point for point what's happening in the, the local interpreter. Um, so, okay. No waiting needed. I, th I think it's because by the time we awaited it, it had already arrived, right? Mm. I'm gonna add I'm adding more stuff. Sorry. No, I think that's great. I let's see. So I'm gonna send the current task ID into the trial wait so we can log that there as well. Awesome. Okay. I have a space here. Okay. 
So what are we looking at? Task zero forks one, then it forks three. Zero waits on one. We end one. End of task. Dumb question, but what is the difference between twi try await end and end of task? I changed the pure thing to just say this task is that's this is the end of that task's execute remote. Got anyway. it. That's the pure case. Okay. But yeah, it used to be pure, but that's more accurate. Is that it's just the that's the end of that task. Okay. Got it. Why does pure of task three happen before pure of task one? Okay. So here's the thing to remember. Mm -hmm. That pure thing is not when the task is completed. That's when the remote handler for that task exits. So that's after it's done things like tell everyone else I'm complete. Remote handler for that. Okay, so right, right. Okay, so like this is not really the end of the task. So that's I, I try to make it more accurate, and it's maybe more accurate, but it's still not. So this is when the task handler is exiting. When that basically when that go function, like every time we spawn a task, we launch go, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the that go function is exiting. That go function is the one that's that's does the work of when this task finishes before the go handler exits it's going to notify other people that work was done which may cause their handlers to exit mm. um right so basically okay zero launches one zero launches three um zero starts waiting on one okay one can't finish. Oh, okay. Well, wait a minute. Okay, so when now the way this all works is this is like a cooperative, like basically a task runs until it gets stuck on something, and then it says, "All right, I'm stuck. Let someone else run." So when the root task started waiting on one, it says, "Well, I can't do anything until one's finished." So we had to pick someone else to start. So are you explaining the difference between the meaning of the wait start and zero 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 is waiting on zero zero one? Uh, um sorry, the difference between what was the first part? I heard the second part was the waiting on um so the difference between that statement try wait start and the immediate next statement of zero 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 is waiting on zero zero one. Is that what you're trying to articulate? Okay, so zero st the zero starts waiting on one. Once it starts waiting, we have to pick some other new task to start running. We picked three, which we finished. So then we picked the then then we had to pick a new task to run. We picked one, which then finished. Right? Is that what I'm seeing? Oh no. Okay, then one. Okay, one. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure what that second try await start is. <laughs> All right, I'm changing 145. Yeah, I'm going to add try await start. I want to start the task ID. Where is try await start? Try await start. Try await start. Ah. Uh, there's two task IDs now in try await. There's TID and yep. current. TID is the one we're waiting for. Cur is the current running task that's waiting, doing the waiting. Uh, okay, so for try await start, I want to do the TID we're waiting for. Well, um, you kind of want to do both of them. 
I want to say we're waiting for to text TID from task Oh boy. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> Too much? We can't, can't have current come first on all of them except for that one. I got you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if it'll reduce the mental load to like tuple from two and then the verb that they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. No, we've, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but ideally, that... we'll draw a diagram. <laughs> yeah, these, these messages are going to get. Okay. Okay. Zero is forking one. Okay, zero is waiting for one. Oh, we have waiting for and waiting on. This is oh it's no. Crazy. This is because this is all right. It's fine. So waiting, waiting for is. I'm putting a start waiting for. Got it. Okay. Need to wait on. That's more consistent. All right. Okay. Okay, zero starts one and three. Zero waits on one and it needs to stop waiting. And then basically one gets its result because behind the scenes three got finished and one got finished. And then it starts waiting on three, but it doesn't need to wait because it's already done. Okay, so that makes sense to me. It's just weird that the three and the one finish comes unexpectedly, maybe, but the rest makes sense to me. Is there anyone that this doesn't make sense to and wants to, wants to ask questions about why they're coming out in this order? I still do not understand why end of task three comes before end of task one. Sure. Uh, yes. But then also the try wait end is the very, very last thing. Like I would expect pure of task yeah. three to be the last thing. <laughs> um, no. Okay. So the only way that we can get a result in the hands of the awaiters, right. Uh -huh. Is that the, that the handler has to put the results in there. The handler has to say, okay, the thing finished. Like I ran the task. Now I have a result and I could stick it in there and then I'm done. Okay. Uh, okay. But it does the, I want to stick the result in there and then I'm going to finish. So the sticking the result in there makes other things happen. Like uh, some of the other waiters get their answer. Okay. So I'm really used to thinking of pure as like the end of a computation. But in fact, that's, that's not what is happening here. Well, the, the idea is that we need to like, give everyone else our results before we're done doing our thing. Like that's part of our computation is that we have mm. to announce our results back to the world. Mm. So when we announce the results back to the world, other things threat that wake up and start happening before I actually get to the end of the mm. end of my handler. Okay. So let's see if I can find where that actually happens. Um, Okay, hey guys, um, I, I gotta go. Okay. okay, thanks so much, Alvaro. This was very fun. It's a lot of fun. See ya. Bye bye. <laughs> okay, so if you go down to like line, let's say 226. Okay, 226. Oh, wait, wait, not there. Okay, um, no, 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 no. Shoot, 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 shoot. Um, Okay. No, I didn't write this stuff, so I'm trying to remember what it's going on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Okay. Look around line 230. Okay. All right. I'm looking at your screen, so I'm looking, making sure I'm looking at exactly what you're looking at. But now here, so what we've done here, this is inside try fork at. So this task has tried, we're inside the handler for one task. Let's pretend it's the root task. Mm -hmm. And the root task is says, I want to fork this other task. Mm -hmm. All right. Now what it's going, what it does here is at the very end here on, on line 230, this is, uh, let me see. Oh, 
Uh, okay. So this thing is going to give over control to another handler, which is going to eventually write the result out of that task. Okay. Um, shoot, this is not the right place to look at. And I don't know it because I don't know this code well enough. So I don't feel like I'm going to be able to explain it all today. But here is the gist of it. The gist is just, it's just that um, what you're seeing is, is that the handler doesn't necessarily end until like everything's done. And there's no one, if anyone was waiting on me, I need to let them, I might get them back into control before I'm like, m before my handler exits, I might do something that makes another thread come alive. Right. Mm. Okay. So for example, so, so let's look at, let's look at the results again. The results say that zero starts waiting on one. Okay. Yeah. So zero can't run anymore until one's done. Mm -hmm. Until one, sorry, not until one's done, but until one has produced a result. Okay. All right. So once one produces a result, once it produces that result, it doesn't, that thread gets blocked. We block that thread and start up thread one again. Mm, okay. All right. So thread one starts running, but thread the, the other task, once it produced a result, got stopped. So we didn't just didn't get to the end of that handler yet. The end of the handler is just kind of waiting in a, this thread's paused. It's not blocked on anything, but it just unblocks someone else. We're going to get back to that. Mm. All right. Okay. So, so that's why. So, okay. So now one has produced a result. And so the try await end on one we see. So we say, okay, we're done waiting on one. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, now, why did task three get done next? Uh, I um, but so so right. So at some point we switched to task three, which didn't have anyone waiting on it. Um, because the try await exited for one and we picked a new thread to start running. We picked thread three to start running because we have to pick from one, two or three, all of one, two and three have work left to be done. Mm. We happen to have picked three. So pick three has no one waiting for it. So it done gets finished, produces results and it's got no one waiting on it. So no else thre other thread jumps in there. It just runs to completion and that thread thing exits having left a result for something that no one's been waiting on yet, but we started a task and we finished it. So then we pick a new task to start running again. We have three is gone. We have one and two left to pick. We decided to pick one, one who has finished writing his results. All it has left to do is to finish the handler, the handler exits and we see the result for one. So now we only have only task the root task left. So we pick the root task who picks up and the next thing it does is a wait on three. Mm -hmm. Three, which is already long gone, mm -hmm. we already have the result for it. So we hit the, we don't have to await. We have the result already. And then zero's done. Uh, okay. Yeah. Because we produced the result at that point. We've produced the result <laughs> for three. I, I, oh, I, it's great that the try away end comes out after. That's kind of a funny thing. <laughs> That's, it's a little bit. That's because of internal artifacts is that we're actually starting an extra thread in there to do the awaiting, but, um, uh, okay. But is it possible? Yeah. For the try await and end of task, um, can we put the originating yeah. like, um, ID that started that just on the try awaiting the end of task is just, that's the end of that task. But like, I guess, which, which node, I, the zero, zero one, those, they're node IDs, right? No, these are all task IDs. Task. Okay. Everything's running so on one right which, now. So which task ID is reporting that I await? Yeah, it, yeah, it is it, it is zero, but we're not annotating it. She's about to put it in there, I think. Yeah, so do, do, do. did we decide the originating thing comes first? So yes. um to text uh, 
I kind of, uh, yeah, I kind of think we should just <laughs> change this to, I think we should, well, when do we actually get the result? Is it true that within one task ID, we can expect causal ordering? Like the, um, yeah, everything that gets logged for one originating task ID, if it's logged after, actually happens after, do we have that guarantee? I'm sorry, say like what happened. I'm sorry, I just had a little bit of trouble hearing you. If uh, we see in the logs, if we see the originating task ID on the left, um, are we guaranteed that all of those have less than or equal to ordering for one particular originating task ID? I know we don't necessarily have that condition for different originating task IDs, but for at least one. Are task IDs, or is this a question, are task IDs ordered? Is that what? Yeah, so for the messages, if I look at all of the messages originating from task ID 000, is it guaranteed that the ordering that those get logged is the same as the ordering that those events actually happened? Yes. This is all one single. And it's, this is all actually single threaded. It's all cooperatively multi threaded, right? So we only ever, ever have one thread running, and we pick which task we're running. Like basically, as soon as a task calls await, we say we'll pick another task. We we say is it if it's done already, we let you get the answer and keep going. But if if the answer is not there yet, then we pick another. We just pick the next task in the pool to start running. Okay, so none of these problems can be because of thread racing because it's all just one thread. Right, because there's never ever more than one thread actually running. We run until we hit either a um, an await where we don't have a result, or when we have a result that for a previous awaiter, and those are the times we switch tasks and we pick. You know, we either when we hit an await that we don't have an answer for, we pick whatever's next in the queue. When we produce a result that someone was waiting for, we switch back to that thing that was waiting on the result. Mm. Um, and that way, everything can just keep making progress. We, we should always have some thread that can make progress. Um, yeah. That way. So I think we can even do a remote dot sleep microseconds and say like. That's the other thing that we'll obviously yes. pick. So a new. now I wonder if we're going to see a different order. So task one, it used to be that task one would finish first. Yeah. But now, hopefully, fingers crossed, we should see task three do the. I'm finishing first, and then we'll wait. We'll finish task one. Forks one, forks three, starts waiting. Da, da, da. Yeah, the try wait ends are going to come out in a weird order. <sighs> did you wait? So, once you want, you put the sleep in, you put the sleep in the root task, didn't you? Oh, no, you it, did it did inside. It, I, th I did it inside task. One, which I had hoped would change the ordering of things. Like, okay, sleep I wonder microseconds. If, I wonder if sleep microseconds, I wonder if that doesn't, it must relinquish the fork. It must, I don't know. Right, you'd expect in sort of, it would say like, okay, I'm going to go to sleep. Try t task three. Uh, let's look. Yeah, it does. It looks like it just enqueues the current thread. And you know that's due because you're looking at the implementation of... Yeah, it's on one, line 196. Sorry. Line 196. Enqueue later. That's taking the, I believe that's taking the current thread and giving it a time that it can't be run before. Uh, okay, well that, okay, so this, so this would not change the order, right? Mm. This would not change the order because you have zero, one, and three started. Uh -huh. One is blocked. 
zero is waiting on one. So three produces this result just like before. We're still sitting there waiting on one to do something. One just goes to sleep for a while. Oh, okay. I. But we didn't, if you slow down, yeah. If you slow down three, you won't see three complete till much later. Got it. I, I had made the assumption that if we said sleep on one, it would pick up three instead. But, but you're right. It would just make one finish slower. Because... No, yeah, but, okay, I'm not sure why. Uh, I guess, see, the, the try await end is the, is the thing that I think is the, uh, that one, that one, I don't know why, that one, that one is weird to me. So is that in queue later actually doing anything with time or is it just it pushing is. it to the back of the queue? I, I think, I mean, it's taking the end, it's taking the milliseconds, but we can look. Oh, poof. Uh. Uh. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. It 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 fakes it. It doesn't. So, <laughs> so it's just pushing it to the back of an empty heap, right? Right. They all have a relative time, but it's like if we sit there and we say, basically, we say, how many milliseconds is the next is the how many milliseconds are we supposed to wait till we start the next task, and we take whatever the last and say, okay, fast forward to that time, and we start executing. So we don't actually, yeah. So sleep is just really a deprioritize back 5,000 slots or something like that, you know, it's like that kind of a thing. Mm. So I guess doing that just pushed it behind three. So then we so, see because it. we would need, to, we would have needed to have other tasks queued in order to see it get in queued behind the previous. Right. So then three finishes, it finishes, which causes the try wait end to happen. But again, because of the way those ordering of those end of tasks come out, they come out later after the try wait end happens. Hmm. And there's no clever way for us to like continually defer pushing it back without it like just infinitely recursing and trying to push it to an empty heap because we have single threaded X. I mean we can actually sleep, I think. You know, we could actually sleep here. I mean we could get to the sorry, I I'm I'm guessing and I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing that when we DQ a task, we don't care if it if it's not supposed to happen right now. We could actually sleep. Um I don't know. I'm, I I think that's my, my memory. Um, In order to sleep, don't you need to interact with the runtime? And just like... Right, right, all right. That's right. We can't sleep. Obviously, we can't sleep yeah, there. Right, right, right. Yeah. We, would, we would need to run under IO. Right, right, right. Good, uh, good point. Okay. Huh. Hmm. Is there a way that you can, like, stick a vector clock in there and just be like, literally put it 5,000 slots back? And then have each task just remember its last seen state. And that way we could simulate the relative order. Oh boy. But that's a kind of a big reason. <laughs> I mean, we, yeah, I mean, without the ability to sleep, we have to just do useless work. Yeah, right. Mm. Oh, we can't even tell what time it is, though. So, right. No, yeah, we because have. Because that would force into IO, right? Yeah. So we have no way of doing actual timing. Is there a way that we can like put an ask ability and then just get the current like local representation of time? Yep, that's something we could add in. Uh, yeah, I mean we could add. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those tough things. Like, there's all kinds of like we, uh, you know, we didn't have sleep inside remote for a while, but that one becomes handy but yeah i could see get, getting current time would be handy and it but it's just when do you stop adding things to remote mm. um i don't oh, know that's a product that we approach it I have. <laughs> yeah <laughs> get current time is a good one though i'm going to i'm i'm putting that on in an internal thing that would... i want to think so we can rethink that yeah. And then I'm probably going to drop off myself. Yeah, this has been, thank you so much, Stu. This has been really, really illuminating. Um, yeah, it's good. And I think this will, you know, as confusing as it is for us, you know, imagine a, a newcomer coming to this. So I think if we can. Well, this is not the type of this, like, 
cooperative multi-threading with scopes and refs and all that stuff is not the type of newcomer code. That, but yeah, we'll obviously get all that. Um, yeah. yeah, let's let's wrap it here. Um, yeah. Because yeah, I think this is great. We've got like a log of sort of things that the local remote is able to do. I will push this to the visualized remote um, namespace, which is under my um, rlmark.projects. So it'll be up there um, since we did uh, so much work. So yeah, thanks so much for joining folks. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, take care. Bye. Bye.